Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Uncut and After Show. I'm your host Nathan Oakley and if you are new to this channel or you've not done so already then be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you'd like to join the community debate then go to nathanoakley.com and check out the Flat Earth Debate forum which you should definitely all join. If you'd like to support the channel there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they premiere. There's also a PayPal, Patreon and crypto link in the info box below the video. Speaking of people on Patreon, I'm going to do a quick shout out to all of you who do support me on Patreon. So a massive shout out to Adrian Quintana, Alistair Main, Billy Highvolt, Burn Factor, My Stomach Is As Flat As The Earth, Chow Young Cat, Dank, uh, David Rakia Gif Gafford, David Wayne Foster, Edwin Johnson, Felix Hung, Fireball X, God Rockin, Jeronism, Joshua, Kirsten, Life Is Short, Matt, Michael, Nyby, Page, Katar Craig, Reinhardt, Rene, Sally Ballis, Sam Hine, Skeptic936, Texas Mike, TheFlatEarthChannel.com, Tina Baker, and Tom Perkins. Massive shout out to all of you for supporting me on Patreon. Now we do have a few people actually in the G Plus server, I believe, and yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So I'll raise the mic on them and you can enjoy their dulcet tones while I set up for the first live show. To occur. Hey, Ed, you there? Yeah, I'm here. I, I thought you were waiting for... I thought you said I may know something, meaning you were still asking righteous. Oh, no, I was just, just, this is more of a general out in the bar, out here, whoever wants oh, to answer it. Yeah. Well, can you know uh, something? Oh, go ahead. Say it again. No, can you know something's going to occur and your knowing is the cause of that occurrence? Well, the way you say it, this is a different way that I, it, it's just the age old question. Uh, has everything been determined by the will of God in advance? And everything's going to happen the way it's supposed to happen no matter what that's that's the argument that most people put out is, is that what you're trying to say right i mean right but is it god's foreknowledge is lock the future in stone or the cause of the future his will you know is like like is it is that his foreknowledge the cause of, of his of the future well my my understanding is has to go back for the whole council of God, which is from Genesis to Revelation. And God is sovereign. There's nothing that surprises an infinite being. He knows everything in advance of it happening. And yet at the same time, there's plenty of scriptures that talk about man choosing and man having a free, uh, a choice, you know, choose today if you will live or die. Choose today if you will serve a holy God or the, or the false pagan gods, you know, the gods that are made out of wood and stone. So that language is very clear. So my view on it is that there, it's parallel. Man has a free will, and it's parallel, but it doesn't violate God's sovereign predestination. I don't quite understand how it works because I'm not God, but at the same time, I understand that the two run parallel and don't crisscross and don't violate each other. Because I think Paul's, I think Paul's argument was that that's a contradiction a bit. Well, I don't know. I, I'm I'm the thing that's made. I'm the created. I'm just the clay. And I would say that God, if he was to show who he actually was, we can't even understand it. So he's he's shown us who he is through the scriptures to as much as he wants us to know. But he is before all things. He knows all things. And he's sovereign. That I accept. At the same time, he says, choose, choose. Now, which one is it? Well, could it be both? I think it's both. I think there, there are two parallel ways that run next to each other, and they don't violate one another. Well, the way, the way I, I termed it, but it, that's not really where I was going, but that's okay. Um, I say this. We have limited choice, and God has limited his sovereignty. Because that's, I think that's how you can marry the two, which means I can't make a third choice. Like if God says either choose the good path or the bad path, there's no third path. 
that I can choose. I have to choose those two. So I have limited, have free will within the limitations of the, of the choices that are placed before me. I can choose to jump off the building and break my, you know, and I'll break my leg. You know, I can choose whether to jump off or not, but I can't choose the consequence. You know, so I'm, um, I can't not choose not to get my leg broken if I jump off a, a building. You know, so I think that's where the, to me, the waters are, where they kind of merge in that sense. I, mean, I, still, I think it's still a mystery at some point where where God pushes His sovereignty over into our free will, and where our free will pushes into God's sovereignty. That's that gray area is hard to define. I don't think we can define it. But that wasn't really my question. I, it was really more: Does God's foreknowledge cause the future to be predetermined, or is there something that the causal choices that we make? He just knows those things. You understand? It's not. It's, there's a. It's a different um, dichotomy. I well, guess. The, well, there's no time for God. There's no. He's not limited by time or bound by time. So uh, his sovereign will works within what we do as well. So he still gets what he wants done, no matter what we do. I, I think this is a very interesting topic. It go on for hours, but in in daily life, uh, there's evidence of a creator and a creation. And that's where it starts for me, for people. And if a person denies that, then they're saying, look, I, I have to look out and see that there's order in, in the universe, uh, so to speak, uh, you know, within the earth uh, and all that we teach here uh, or accept. And someone must have done this that's greater than I. If a, if a person doesn't start there, well, then they're not even seeking to know who made them or what life is about. And that's something that's personal with each person. And that's the struggle that they have to go with through life. And as, as you remember, when you were kids, as I do, I didn't want to do something that would shame my parents. I didn't want to do some kind of action as a young teenager that would bring dishonor to my family name because I respected my father or mother so much. Well, isn't that what God is saying when he shows you creation? Isn't that what he wants from us when we see that, you know, seek me, you will find me. Ask and it shall be given. Knock and keep knocking and it will be open. And that's all a person has to do according to the scriptures. But what, when does a person do that? W will a person do that? Well, when you have the flesh and the temptations of the world. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. When you have the flesh, the desires of the flesh, the temptations of the world, all the things that uh, our other side wants, that's the battle. Yeah, you got to follow the spirit and not the flesh. Exactly. Yeah. And, but, you know, it's interesting is the spirit has rewards in the present, but immensely much more rewards in the future. And the flesh has really bad rewards in the future. <laughs> and just a little bit now. <laughs> but opposite. the flesh can be trained. No, it has to be killed. <laughs> well... has to die because I have to give up my will. Christianity is a violent uh, faith because someone has to die for it to happen. And it's not, it's not God, it's me. I have to die for me to be a Christian. I have to give up. I have to say you, not me. That's a violent beginning to anything. I don't know. It sounds pretty extreme. I thought it was just to get your flesh in line to, to like, how do I say it? Well, Jesus said it. Deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow me. Uh, there's other scriptures that are even more intense uh, than that. Very intense. And it's coming from the mouth of Jesus because there, it's just one, one way. I mean, this is the gospel. The gospel is God wants to solve the sin problem. Well, he has to become a man and take our place and experience the wrath of God upon himself so that we don't. That's the Christian message. And Christ says, here's, here's how you become. You have to be born again. 
Well, if you're born again, that means you died. But it's a spiritual rebirth he's talking about. So your spirit is dead. It needs to be quickened. You, you need, and the only way is to die to the old you. And that's what the significance of water baptism is. It's not, water baptism doesn't save anybody. It's, it's a symbolic action to portray a point. And the point is this, when I go down in the water, the old me dies. When I come out, the new me is there because God revived my spirit. That's the whole point. And it's called, and it's associated with repentance. So why would I repent when I really like to sin? I mean, I, I like to sin like the, the rest of you, right? That's just my nature. But why would I want to stop? I mean, I need a new power. I need, I need God in me to help me stop. And it says crucify the flesh. I mean, crucifixion is pretty heavy duty. Yeah, I remember going through that when I was struggling with sexual addiction. I mean, I knew it was wrong, continued it down that path. <clears throat> knew it, you know, even trying to follow Christ in that vein. But I had to look at my own heart and realize I don't really want to change. You know, so that desire to do that has to change. You know, do you, and how do you, what, what can occur and what will occur to cause that thing to, to happen? That's why when we look at the evil in the world, you're looking at the acts, but ultimately the issue has to be driven to the heart. Somebody's got to want to do good. Somebody's got to want to do what's right. They've got to want to not be doing the things that they do. Because you can, you, can, you can manage and put people in jail and you can do all this stuff and that's all the world can do. But until the heart has changed, nothing will ever change. Yeah, the, there's a scripture yeah, that even the Lord said. It's hard to scrutinize because uh, the ego is really strong when you seem to be really talented and really good at what you do. So therein lies the problem with uh, certain addictions. And uh, it takes a really, really honest look deep within yourself to really uh, see that. Good morning, guys. On. Good morning. And here, let's, let's go back to a topic that started this whole conversation, though. If, if there is no intelligent agent that started this whole game, so to speak, if it's all natural processes, we're just obeying the laws of chemistry, physics, um, you know, we're just a, our bodies and that's all we're doing. Who is removing free will? Is it the, is it the person that's adding God? Or the person that says God doesn't isn't even an agent in the process, because technically, if we're following just the rules of the game or rules of the laws around us, the laws of chemistry, right now all we're doing, and this is where I don't know if you remember way back when I was telling them um, uh, flat earther or whatever whatever it was, that you're just a, a coke bottle fizzing, we're just a bunch of chemicals reacting with one another. So that's all we're doing. That's all you can really say. There's no ultimate choice and free will. It's just rea rea we're reacting to the things around us. My chemical is reacting with your chemical. That's all we are. There has to be something more to be able to say even, even to have any free will or even free choice. So the atheistic perspective falls apart right there. So you can't even make truth claims under the atheistic perspective because it's just your chemical process is firing. So what are you really saying? You know? Everything well, falls gets, apart. Yeah, and it gets very complex when you talk about something that's not matter, like conscious and morality. Where did we get morality and conscious from? And, and, and this consciousness. Uh, okay, you know, like no one taught me how to say the F word. No one taught me how to cuss. And I, and I had the dirtiest mouth you could imagine in high school. And uh, my parents didn't say, okay, when you go to school, say these words. No, no one taught me. What, what made me do that? Well, I heard it. And I gravitated towards it. And to be cool, you had to say those things. So I said those things. And um, it's a testimony of, I felt really bad when I first did it. But what made me feel bad? Why did I feel bad? See, these are the things that God puts in everybody to give clues as to, hey, there's a better you, but it's got to be with me. It's not 
crucify yourself out there in the flesh because you're in a fallen state. You got sin. And I have to deal with your sin first. I can hear the ballers now. Ed, you're just a, you're just a Christian religious zealot. That's what you are. Paul, I you need to stay shut up about this religion thing. You know, it's not about religion. All flat earth is, is about religion. That's all it's about. That's all you guys talk about. Well, you got you said it right, dead. You got to be dead to get it because when you're alive, you're in the way. <laughs> it's it's really hard to get people to engage you on the ideas uh, because at some point, especially when you're not familiar with the person, they tend to want to tag the general idea of what they think the topic is about onto who onto you and what you think and your thoughts on the matter. And that's what makes things really hard, especially when discussing uh, flat earth is because they want to tell us what we believe and what we. Yeah, that's why they have the flat earth society. The reason we are challenged with straw man arguments that they say we hold it's because they've been presented those arguments from their very own mainstream. It's the same people. They don't appreciate that. They just see the Flat Earth Society and similar uh, controlled up narrative outlets as being us. Now, a lot of Flat Earthers fall into the same exact uh, pit. In other words, they would say, oh, we have an ice wall. Why? Well, because we've been told by them. Exactly the same. But... Part of the narrative, the controlled up narrative, will bleed its way into the claim to be truthers. And likewise, the globe earth protagonist will get their claws into an argument that can be debunked simply because it's been told to them that that's how we see things. They're not asking us our viewpoint. They're telling you flat earthers say this or the flat earth falls apart because and then they'll pull apart a model. You know, that's just how it's been ordained to be. No, you're right. Uh, you're absolutely right, Nathan. I was there when you were talking to Anthony, I think it was yesterday, about that. And uh, again, one picture of an ice wall 200 feet tall or a few miles of it doesn't prove it's, it's all the way around us. Now, obviously, if we believe the Earth is a plane. And so there's something that holds back the oceans. Now, I could go to the Bible and it says it's a boundary. Well, what kind of boundary? I don't know. It just says it's got boundaries. Just like we know the antecedent for gas pressure is a container, but I don't see a container. But the whole point is it's got to be something because it's the antecedent. So we know that the oceans are kept in by something. I just don't know what it is. Right. But there are plenty of narratives out there that are asserted as being flat earth narratives. Or flat earth yeah, answers or flat earthers believe that's, this. That's the trap, as you eloquently said. That's how they want to trap us. Right. I give you both sides of the argument. And as is always the case with anything that's polluted with nonsense nar narration, a lot of it's going to be truthful in the first instance. So if you go to the Flat Earth Society, there's probably a fair amount, I haven't recently. Um, probably a fair amount of correct information that you know flies in the face of the heliocentric model but the main purpose is to plant the seed of the nonsense assertions the edges of a disc in space that's akin to their wanting space to be absolutely kept paramount even in the opposition's narrative so the disc in space is you know the biggest tell that it's it's not a flat earth narrative we absolutely decry space we say space is fake because it's violating several laws of nature. Whereas they say, flat earthers think there's a disc in space. I know we don't, but that's what they're presented with. You know, it's funny. I was, you, you, I was saying, you know, how much, you know, I ask questions. When I used to get into discussions with people, people used to ask me, do you need to know, you know, like, because I used to do apologetics and engage with people on the faith in that arena. And most people read books and do all this to try to understand somebody's worldview. You know, not I thought, you know what? The best person to read and understand their worldview is the person you're talking to. 
so I don't need to read a book. I just ask the person, what do you mean by that? Why do you, why do you say that? Why, where'd you get that from? You know, because honestly, most people in life have a hodgepodge of beliefs. They might be pulling from Hinduism. They might be pulling from Christianity. They might be pulling from the New Age. They might be pulling from any number of religious perspectives to build their so-called worldview. So basically, what anybody needs to do, if you want to have an honest discussion, just ask the person what they think and engage at that level. Don't try to read into something that you think is there. Well, that's you know, straw manning, is logical it? sense. Yeah. Present, present an argument that you haven't made is a straw man argument. Right. And if you read a book and you impose that book on somebody else, you're, you're, you're right. You're building the straw man and attacking it, not the person's view. Right. Hey, Flatsoid. Hello, hello. How's it going? Hello. 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 Uh, just a heads up. Any anybody watch uh, Trump's uh, UN speech? It was about thirty-seven minutes long. No. No. Well, when you get a chance, go to YouTube and watch it. Not the whole thing, unless you want it in context. But uh, just the last, say, three minutes. An interesting statement comes out of him, and I'll leave it to. I'll just leave it there. <laughs> I I caught it right away, and I had to play it several times. I go, did he? What does he mean by this? It doesn't even match what he's saying in context, but he put it in there. Kill back. Sorry, I don't know what happened. I just knocked out. Do any of you guys have Twitter? No. No. <laughs> no. I have it, but I have it, but I don't follow it. Yeah, it's something it's... I've never caught on. Is it something you can go to to bring up on screen, Paul? Yeah, give me a second. I'll, I'll see what I can do. Um, yeah, I might go to do it. Looks like QE's more than halfway there on this fund. Go fund me. Right. Give a heads up here. See where he's at. Three thirty-eight raised of a six hundred dollar goal. So we're almost there. Okay, I got my Twitter up. What do you What do you want to look at? Nathan? My Twitter feed, which is. At Nathan Oakley eighty. We'll have a little chat about one of the tweets I've had. I don't know how to bring. It. I don't know how to use Twitter. I just use it to share the show. Oh, I didn't get many results. Let's see. Oh, I said at. I actually typed an at to say Nathan Oakley. <laughs> <laughs> Can't even spell this morning. Okay. All right, you're popping up on Paul on the plane. Uh, where are you at? Let me see if I can figure out how to get to you. Let me just click on. Oh. Nathan Oakley has on no space. Oh, yeah, no space. Is. So Nathan with a capital N, Oakley with a capital O, and then eight zero. Oh, eight zero. Yeah. So give, give that to me again. I'm sorry. So it's at Nathan Oakley 80. Oh, there he is. Maybe. Oh, no. Capital N. Capital N. Capital N, capital O. All one word. Nathan Oakley 80. It still didn't pop up. Am I spelling it right? Nathan Oakley. N A T H A N O A K L E Y eight zero. Yeah, I got that in there. Let me take the ad out and see what happens. No wonder hmm. you don't go on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> I don't. Yeah. Let me try. Let me, let me try a different way here. So if there's another way I can do it. Let's see. Advanced search, maybe. Well, I don't know if that's going to help either. Let me try people. No. Maybe go to Google and type in at Nathan Oakley. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, let me try that. <clears throat> Even that didn't pop up anything. You're being censored. I guess so. Maybe. Oh, there you are. I crap. Whoop. It says it doesn't exist. This account does not exist. You may need to refresh it. Sometimes these things, if you don't go on after a while, they put you in the sleep mode. Hmm. Weird. Okay. Don't worry about it. Yeah. I'll keep playing with it. I'll, I'll take it off. If I can get it to come up, I'll let you know. I'll okay. play around with it. So what were you referencing? Uh, I don't want to talk about it unless we can get it up. Sorry. If we can get yeah. it up, then fine. If not, don't worry. All right. All right, five minutes and we'll go live. Okay. The flat side. Nice. Not hearing me. Do you ever hang out on Discord, the tenth man? No, I I only do the Oakley show and QE show. For the most part, I mean, if I mean, I don't have the time. I'm a, I got a farm to keep up and other th responsibilities and yeah, I have a passion. So. I have a passion for the topic, and I try to stay involved as much as I can. But uh, you know, there's plenty of people who are in there fighting the battle. <laughs> I don't need to be another one. Yeah, you know, it's just. Uh, they get in there and they argue the same arguments. Yeah, but sometimes some interesting chat comes up. Like what? Well, just like among the flat earthers, like we are talking right now. Yeah, I, I, I like saying I'm on one topic and exhausting it for the most part. Uh, if it bounces around, then it's a whole new topic. I agree when it bounces around. Flat side's back. Hey, flat side. What were you saying? Hey, Lily. Hey, Coriolis, your favorite one. Yeah, I love Coriolis. I, I love gas pressure without a container. I can say on those for the rest of my life because they're just so strong of an argument. Uh, just show me those two being wrong and uh, I'll consider a ball. They can't even – they're not even 100 miles within – an inkling of it. They have no sound arguments. Well, it can't be that hard if it's reality. Whereas our side, strong arguments, matches the reality, matches what we feel and see through our senses. I found it, by the way. Oh, okay. I just, I just got on it as well. <laughs> I was going to send you the link. Well, just without alluding to what it is, just give me a second. I'm just going to take it off screen so I can have a look at what you're seeing. Hey, can you scroll down, please? Hey, righteous. Hey, Redman. How does it show you tweets that have been tweeted at me? Can I see that? Um, I don't know. Let me see. There you go. Tweets and replies. Is that it? Maybe. Maybe. Where? Do you see it? 
Uh, no, I didn't. Somebody's tweeted at me, but not showing up, weirdly. I mean, I may not be able to see them if it's at you. Did you make it public where you can, everybody can see it? I don't Something know. Like that it's Twitter. I just saw it on my feed. No, it's not there. Not to worry. Okay, I'll keep playing around if I see it. Do you know what it? Well, if you if you don't want to talk about it, I can't find it. But well, I'll, 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 I'll send it you in. I'll send it you in. Um, in Skype. Just I don't want to give the game away in case you can't find it. You see, um, okay. we got we got sixty seconds, so I'll just send it you in, on Master B. Okay, sounds good. I'll I'll, I'll look for it while we're, we're getting the show started. Okay. You won't be able to see any of the messages unless one of you is following each other. Someone tweeted at me. I don't I don't know how Twitter works. That's the problem here. Well, maybe Paul could just follow you, and then would that allow him to see all the messages, or just the messages between Paul and Nathan? I don't know. But I've got to Nathan? got to start the show, live show. So. Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Live. I'm your host Nathan Oakley and if you are new to this channel or you've not done so already then be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you'd like to support this channel there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they are live. There's also a PayPal, Patreon and crypto link in the info box below this video. Most importantly if you'd like to join the discussion simply mute the page you are currently watching then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the nature of Earth. If you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected. And if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcome back on the next stream. Please also share the show on social media. Sharing the show obviously increases the live audience, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel. So please share the show on Facebook and Twitter. And one last time, if you're new to the channel or you've not done so already, then be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. Now we are joined by Paul, 10th Man, Flatsoid, The One and Righteous Force. Very good to have you all in G+. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, good afternoon. Good morning. Morning, good, good afternoon. morning. Good evening, wherever you may be. We've also got a few people in Discord. Welcome one and all in Discord. Hey, hey. Good to have you, good to have you. Any signs of Earth curvature? No, I'm afraid not, Nathan. Not, not from or Go back in South Africa. Not from Oregon. Uh, real, real quick, uh, Anthony, or Nathan, I'm sorry, Nathan, is it um, regarding reference frames? Uh, yes, I think. I think okay, well, I got it. I got it. <laughs> any, any evidence of axial rotation? Uh, I'm sorry, I couldn't find the axis. Not and of you, the you airspace. Sh share variety. your screen, Paul. I'll just, uh, I'll just transition to the... Back at page. Ah, here we go. Yeah, cool. Can you make that picture? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Paul's gone to my Twitter page. Now, I, I'm not a Twitter user. I do use it to share the show, and obviously I encourage others to do so. And Simon Dan has tweeted me with what you can see on screen. Let's just see if I can make this a little bit bigger. Give me a second. Yeah, let me try to... I can probably increased it on my end but i don't know if you want the content of the no no just the, like just the picture i can make it a bit bigger there we go perfect <laughs> so what we've got is a tractor <laughs> we've got a tractor pulling along a dude yeah, who's baby. bouncing up and down on a trampoline now i haven't got the full context from simon dan but 
what my question would be is, given that there's claimed to be a Coriolis deviation to prove that Earth is rotating underneath, say, a gyroscope or a pendulum or a bullet, the idea is that you see a deviation to prove Earth spins. So my question would be, what precisely is the deviation that we are looking at here to compare it to the claim to be Coriolis proof that Earth's supposed to have, but we don't see? Is this an example of us not seeing deviation? Because Earth's supposed to have a Coriolis deviation, 15 degree turn an hour under the gyroscope. Well, this is a demonstration of a guy and the tractor not going underneath him. So I don't really understand what you're trying to prove here, Simon Dan. Is it that you're trying to defy Coriolis deviation with this demonstration? Because they're supposed to have a deviation. And I assume this is a demonstration of a lack of deviation. So just explain to me, if you will, what you're trying to prove, Simon Dan. Can I say something about this? Can I say something real quick? Can you hear me? Yeah. This is the inertial reference frame. Because everything's moving at a constant velocity. It's not yeah, curving, it's, it's not accelerating. So this is the inertial reference frame. They claim we're in the non-inertial reference frame. Just to be clear. Constellation of momentum. Well, the non-inertial reference frame would be the frame of reference that's turning in the Coriolis effect underneath the inertial reference frame. So the claim from Globe Earth is that you fire a bullet and Earth rotates underneath it. Or you throw a, a kicker ball, in the case of Neil deGrasse Tyson's example, and Earth and goalposts rotate underneath. That's the claim that's supposed to prove Earth spinning, the deviation that you see as Earth rotates underneath. So I'm at a loss as to what this is claiming to prove, given that the claim of proof that Earth spins is a deviation called Coriolis force. They bounce the guy even higher, the tractor would drive away from him. Yeah, I was thinking if he all of a sudden, if this tractor all of a sudden, he decided at the highest point of the guys up high, the tractor decided to go off into the field, then what would happen? It would who go cares? flat onto the road. Who cares? The claim globe proof of spin is Coriolis deviation. Seeing it deviate is what's claimed to prove Earth spins. So what's this? A justification for why we don't see the proof of Earth spin known as Coriolis deviation? Is this the? Is this a justification for why we don't see proof of Earth spins? Seems that way to me. It is. You're, you're nailing them because they're arguing the other side of the argument when they still at the same time want to argue the other side of the argument. <laughs> So it seems Simon Dan is fighting against there being deviation and justifying the lack of Coriolis deviation with this horse shit. It seems you don't understand what you're supposed to be fighting for, Simon Dan. You're supposed to be fighting for the Coriolis effect, the claim that Earth spins underneath an inertial reference frame, showing a deviation. So this lack of deviation, what the <laughs> hell is this proving, you stupid muppet? <laughs> so Simon, Simon then tried to prove Coriolis somehow? No, no, definitely not chocolate because Coriolis effect is a deviation, an apparent deviation because the reference frame, in this case example by the tractor moving along, is supposed to move underneath the inertial reference frame. But this seems to be demonstrating that they travel as one and don't deviate. So what are you trying to say, Simon Dan? We don't see any Coriolis deviation on Earth because it's like this example. Well, then we don't see any proof of Earth spin, mate. Muppet. So this little video is from Simon Dan? Yeah, he tweeted it at me. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> wow, okay. This is what they got? Yep. Well, I'm just trying to figure out a couple of things here. One... What is the speed of the tractor, or is this video sped up? That's number one. Number two, why are there boards in front and back of that trampoline? Why not just have a trampoline back there? Why are those boards up there, and why are they so high? What's the point? Why have they got guys guiding them? They bounce. Why can't they jump up and down? Anyway, a lot of questions about why we don't see a deviation in this example. How does this prove Earth spins? 
Is this this is just a justification for why we don't see any deviation. Yes. Here you go. Here's an example of no deviation. Well, the deviation's what you need, Dumbo. Simon Dan, what the hell? Don't you understand your own argument? Hey, Arwin and hey, Quantum Eraser. Good to have you both. I think uh, Simon then got uh, the same disease that Zanuck has. <laughs> yeah, fighting against the Coriolis deviation we should see to prove Earth spins. Yeah, it seems he's got the same affliction as Rumpus, Zanuck, and a lot of other ones, including George Balsack or whatever his surname is. Tenth Man, what did yeah. Tenth Man say? Say that said, again, Tenth Man. I said, why does he have the other contraptions on the back bed, like the boards blocking air, and what is the speed of the tractor in actual miles? It's hard to tell. Precisely. <laughs> Take a look at the speed of the tractor and the wind blocking boards. So, what you're telling me there, Simon Dan, what a clown you are. If I get on a flatbed truck and I'm racing down the highway at 80 miles an hour and I throw a ping pong ball up in the air, are you saying that ball is coming back down in my hand? How about a baseball? How about a softball? How about a watermelon? You friggin' bozos. Take uh -huh. those boards away. And pick up the speed. This is, I'll tell yeah, you but, what. Yeah, but you see it later. Retard. Uh, sorry, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, uh, sorry, flat side. How about, who cares? The claimed globe yeah, yeah. proof is Coriolis deviation. And here's yeah, yeah. what? An example of no deviation? What the hell is this proving then? Conservation yeah, yeah, of right. momentum. Yeah. That's it. Oh. Conservation of momentum. I, I'm with who cares. <laughs> <laughs> this is not First of all, we need to prove that we spin so that there is any momentum that's to be conserved. <laughs> Nathan, you are correct. You are correct because it's it's messed up on so many levels. But you are correct, sir. What are you trying to prove here with this specific example, Simon Dan, without even talking about the boards or the speed? You're correct. It's a joke. Well... Assuming the vehicle they used, it must be a detraction. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's, it says this video is a great example of relative speed and movement of projectile uh, projectiles in action. Sorry, is that is that a glow proof? Uh, uh, are you confusing what you're trying to prove, uh, Simon Dan? Coriolis deviation. That's what you need. Not a justification for the lack of deviation that we actually observe, because that's not proving Earth spins, you dimwit. Do you think Simon will ever come on here and actually debate? Clearly not. He'd rather tweet me with this complete crap. Simon, Dan, what is he going to come on and talk about fences? <laughs> talk about gates, yeah. Talk about gates for a while. So if Zanuck was here, he's going to say, well, make a quick right turn and get to the next latitude. And that guy's going to be splat on the ground. This is sad as shit. This is what they got as proof of Coriolis. <laughs> it's, it's, not even it's, not even it's not showing Coriolis. It's not it's showing Coriolis. Exa exactly, exactly my point. The proof is no proof. Thanks. <laughs> I, I think the only example we're seeing here is uh, one very deeply confused bowler. What I see is lots of fundamentalist religious globetard zealots that are deeply troubled by our arguments to the point that they need to go out and dig out little videos, go to physics forums and ask people deemed to be more intelligent than themselves for the answers to our questions. That's what I see. People troubled. I don't leave sleep over anything Simon Dan has got to say. I don't watch Simon Dan. I'm not interested in any of his nonsense assertions that will reify a model and use an R value they have no proof of. None of that concerns me. But they're deeply concerned with our arguments that we put forth about the lack of Coriolis deviation claimed to prove Earth spinning. And the assumptive argument whenever detailing these effects 
Presumably, if he was here, he'd be saying, oh, yeah, the tractor's analogous to an Earth that spins, begging the question automatically in his example. But he won't even get that far. He won't even qualify what he's supposed to be proving. Just a tweet of a tractor. What have you got a bit of a tractor interest? How kind of crap is this? That's subtle, not me. Subtle, subtle <laughs> Skype. Hey, Ranty. Hello. <laughs> I've got it on mute. I've got the line muted. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear me? Hello. Yeah, we hear you. Right. Good stuff. Good, What's good that Simon Dan playing at? It's ridiculous. I, I thought it's a joke, obviously, isn't it? Well, well it is a joke. Is. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Ranty. Sorry. Yeah, it has to be a joke. He's definitely just trolling you. No. Do you not think he's actually asserting that, look, Earth and atmosphere travel as one? That's his argument. Because he's listened to the other Muppets who are flying in the face of a Coriolis deviation and justifying the lack thereof. While I point out here that it's ultimately a begging the question fallacy. All they're going to do, if he was here, is say, the tract is analogous to an Earth that's moving. So automatically begging the question that he's got an analogy of a moving Earth, like the moving tractor. They'd just beg the question. So that's all he'd do. The tractor's like the moving Earth. So Earth's automatically moving in your example then. Your analogy is automatically juxtaposed with the moving Earth. So you're automatically begging the question. That's what we're pointing out here. Not actually having the stupid Coriolis argument anymore. Pointing out that it just begs the question of a spinning ball Earth. The very thing they're trying to prove. Well, it's, well, it's just right, he, it's just right yeah, in the title. It's from he wants your attention physics, clearly, September Nathan. 24. <laughs> you're, you're giving him too much credit, Ranty. He's not trolling, Nathan. This is actually a serious post here. Where did he put this? Did he put any? Did he talk about what he was trying to prove or, or what? No, nah, of course not. He's not going to qualify his example and leave it overtly obvious how wrong he is. He's just going to loosely throw something up on Twitter that says... Here you go. Here's an example of, presumably, Earth and atmosphere travelling as one. Giving you no Coriolis deviation, Muppet. And, no, and this is no, the, ex and, no explanation. And this no, is the caliber of, of the people that they follow. He didn't give you any explanation. He just posted a video. Yeah, what you see so there so is what you get. It's a tweet. <laughs> so trying to... What a cloud. Oh, okay. oh, he, wants, he wants your attention, Nathan, doesn't he? They all do, Ranty. Why, why, does, do. why doesn't he show up? <laughs> why doesn't he show up here one day? I don't understand. What, what are you tweeting from from the never 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 land? Like I don't understand. But Simon Dan doesn't show up on other people's shows. He why not? Even, even on he just tries to but, pull people over to his. Why not? Why is he tweeting he Nathan? He's a retard. So why is he tweeting this bullshit at Nathan? Come on, man. Get the hell off your whack ass seat with your little globe. Come on the show. <laughs> yeah, come on, Simon Dan. Come and presuppose that the tract is analogous to your presupposition of a spinning ball Earth. Come on, beg the question here so we can rip you a new one. Uh, sh show my screen. Please. Please. You're on. I'm really joking. <laughs> <laughs> I just found that on uh, YouTube. Can you see this? Yeah, I've got you up, yeah. Flat earthers need to watch this video so they understand some basic physics. How can a plane land on a spinning earth? <laughs> what? Says for some reason, this guy can jump on a moving trampoline. Oh my what god. A, what a ding bat. Actually, to me, this is one of the topics that we were talking about before. <laughs> they, both, everybody I've heard and talked to, on the Discord and even this video, to me shows that they think we don't understand reference frames. And I've actually told them, this is not our argument. Reference frames aren't our argument. And, and this just proves it. So they're, they're trying to argue reference frames, but that's not the argument we're making. Yeah. It shows that... I'll say again, the reason they want to argue reference frames is because a Coriolis example starts with a spinning reference frame. So automatically analogous to their begging the question fallacy. So they're saying, let's argue about Coriolis. In other words, to translate that loosely, let's automatically assume Earth is comparable to a spinning reference frame. Then they just go, uh, well, the fact that we should see a deviation in that example of Coriolis, it, that bit's lost on them. 
<laughs> you know, literally, it's completely lost on them. Your proof of Earth spin <laughs> is the deviation that Simon Dan is showing us why it doesn't happen, apparently, when he begs the question that a bloody tractor is analogous to a spinning Earth. <laughs> What a <laughs> These people kill themselves suicide each time. This is why yeah, people don't do come here. They, they are troubled by our arguments, and it brings me great joy. Right. Uh, we're all living rent-free in these fundies' brains. They're deeply troubled to the point where they leave us, our company, and go off to the physics forums and ask for the answers they can't answer. Do they get answers? No. <laughs> of course not. But they're still very troubled by what we have to put down here. Yeah? We've had 18 right. months now. A bit of Dal came out of me then. <laughs> we had 18 months of housekeeping questions. None of them have been addressed. None. Not one. We don't live on a spinning earth flying through a vacuum. The earth's obviously observably flat and stationary and motionless. And there's no evidence whatsoever to prove we live on a spinning ball. Now our questions allude to this and we're not losing sleep over it. We know the nature of our reality. It's obvious. These fundies, they need answers. They need to go and find little video clip it to fly in the face of their own proof that they claim that Earth spins, in this case, Simon Dan, showing you how we don't have deviation, eh, Simon? Well done. He's on his way to becoming a flat earther now. Trying to realize that. <laughs> well, I get the idea that the ballers are trying like a new strategy to overcome this whole issue of them not being able to answer the questions by trying to co-opt the flat earth side of the answer and then making it appear like they yeah they overcome the problem not, not by answering but by co-opting the opponent's argument and then trying to hide that that doesn't actually answer the question that it's become a core new strategy i think what do you guys think yeah i kind of follow you i have a question How for they john end up arguing that Everything moves lockstep, so there is no Coriolis effect, all that. You know, it's it's an attempt to co-opt the opponent's argument. It's Yeah, it's a it's a way of taking us saying there's no deviation and within the context of a begging the question fallacy that earth spinning, explaining why there's no deviation on a spinning reference frame. So you're still begging the question that earth spins, but explaining why we don't see the very effect that's claimed to prove it spins, in this case Coriolis. So your lockstep earth and atmosphere, or your lockstep trampolina with a bloody tractor, is a demonstration of a lack of Coriolis deviation, the very thing that's supposed to prove earth spins. And they need to have the argument because it starts with the spinning reference frame. It starts with them with a juxtaposition between that tractor, that spinning reference frame, that roundabout, and a spinning earth. Earth that's moving is always the starting premise. In other words, it's a, a it seems to me now like a clumsy way to beg the question, basically. Nathan, Pete Shea just put on. Oh, is right. In that example, you're only dealing with a non inertial, you're only dealing with an inertial reference frame in that example. Because it's only moving in one direction. Non inertial, believe it or not. Hey, Nathan, Pete Shea just posted something in chat. I'm dying. It says, The nature of our reality is not obvious. Earth is only flat and stationary in relation to a spinning ball. Flat and stationary in relation to a spinning ball. Is this guy insane? Pete, yeah, uh, he is, yeah. Simon Man Dan is in the chat on YouTube. On the YouTube yep. chat, he's in there. Oh, oh. come on, come in, come in here, buddy. Come explain this bullshit ass video you just dropped in here, which are ridiculous just ass. Actually, full <laughs> Who the hell are you trying to kid with this nonsense, man? Please come in here and explain this bullshit. If you have balls, he has only one ball, chocolate. So, just to address Babs, so. No, not, not the inertial reference frame. Seems weird because it's a traveling, moving tractor, right? It's the non-inertial. That would yeah. be the, analog the analogy. I thought be... the inertial reference frame. Go on. Sorry, go ahead. No, yeah, you go ahead. You thought the inertial reference frame what? 
thought the inertial reference frame was the one that was moving in one straight line. It wasn't. It, uh, is. it is. Deviating at all, and it wasn't subject to any forces. Yeah, that's correct. But just because the tractor's traveling in a straight line doesn't make it analogous to the ball that's traveling in a straight line with a rotating platform underneath. The rotating platform underneath is the non-inertial reference frame. And the reason is simple. Coriolis effect is an observation from a non-inertial reference frame. And it's describing a not actual deviation. So the effect that's being described are you seeing the ball seem to deviate away from you because you rota ro rotate underneath would make the frame that the d description of the effect is coming from not actually moving. You yourself are seeing an effect of you moving that's being described in the Coriolis effect. But that reference frame is the non-inertial reference frame. It's You're observing something travelling through the inertial, i.e. you're observing the inertia of the ball and it's seeming to deviate. Now the reality of that non-inertial reference frame is that the effect is caused by you spinning underneath, but you're not going to notice that. You're not making the observation's reference, the Coriolis force, about the rotating reference frame. It's about the deviation of the ball. So the ball, which would be flying straight, is in the inertial reference frame as it flies straight. And the tractor is analogous, in Coriolis deviation terms, to the roundabout. It's the frame of reference that should be, in Coriolis terms, moving underneath and demonstrating the guy on the trampoline bloody deviating. Now, Simon and Dan saying, look, no deviation. Or, to put it another way, look, no Coriolis effect. What a bonehead. But anyway, just to, <laughs> just, just, to com just to make it clear, just to summarise, so I can keep the left hold on, just summarise. So the inertial reference frame, just to make this even more confusing, <laughs> could be a drone underneath a roundabout. Now, the drone could be hovering, but that's still classed as the inertial reference frame, even though it's not moving at all, technically, right? It's hovering. But you'd still see the Coriolis force in action, because you're rotating underneath it on a roundabout as it hovers. So from your position on the non-inertial spinning reference frame of a roundabout with a drone hovering above it, you see the drone, which is not moving, seeming to come towards you and go away. Come towards you, go away as you rotate underneath. So it's actually the actual force, if you will, is the roundabout spinning. The drone's not coming towards you and going away from you or from your vantage point seeming to fly towards you and seeming to fly away again it's you rotating underneath but the drone is the inertial reference frame even though in this example it's not moving at all and the roundabout is the non-inertial make sense but the the tractor <laughs> is on the non-inertial reference frame because it's on the rotating surface of earth no <laughs> in the no. example that he's giving Forget about rotating Earth. That's just how they beg the question. We'll come to that again later. It needs to be clearly. But in this example, the analogy is between a, a ball being tossed on a roundabout and you not seeing it deviate. So the planes aren't showing Coriolis deviation. And this is a justification for why planes don't show Coriolis deviation. So in my example of a roundabout... I say the drone seems to come towards you and seems to fly away. That's the Coriolis force. Yeah, a not actual force. It's seeming to come towards you. It's hovering, remember, right? Well, when you compare that to the guy on the trampoline not deviating from the trampoline as it moves along, it's analogous to a drone on a roundabout staying above the point it lifted off from so you put a little x on the roundabout push an up stick on the drone and like the guy he's showing in the trampoline the drone just follows along with the roundabout not deviating but that's not cor <laughs> but that's not coriolis effect yeah that's a non-example of a deviation that's supposed to prove earth spins so in this ham-handed crap example from Simon Dan the Bonehead, he's got an example that demonstrates 
the guy on the trampoline not deviating and the proof of earth spinning is planes, drones, trampolinists bloody deviating. According to the Globe Earth rhetoric, you shouldn't need a trampoline on a bloody tractor. You should just have a trampoline and a guy jumping up and down and earth rotating yep. underneath the trampoline. That's what's supposed to prove Earth spins. But that never happens. Yep. Does it does it matter that does it does it matter that the tractor is moving in a linear linear path as opposed to the uh, roundabout that's moving in a circular path? Does that make any difference to Depends this? Depends what you're trying to prove. In this case they're screwed both ways. They're trying to claim that there's a deviation, and you're saying if it deviates from a linear path, will that change anything? Well, potentially, I don't know. I haven't fiddled with their particular setup. But you're supposed to see a deviation. In other words, when you throw your cigarette butt out of a moving vehicle, it flies away behind you at rapid speed? No, it doesn't. It stays in the area that you threw it out of the car as you <laughs> hurtled away from it, right? Well, that's the deviation. Well, what this example is claiming is you throw your fag butt out the window and you can see it travelling along with the car at the same rate as the car. Not deviating. <laughs> yeah. So so this example no, no is... Coriolis. Go on. That's why they cheated with the boards. Oh, hold on, let's just round this out with Babs. Go on, go on, Babs. I was just saying that it doesn't show a, a Coriolis effect at all. <laughs> that's no. right. This is a, a non-deviation that he's trying to prove. <laughs> what what part of the globe earth rhetoric and proof it spins is a non-deviation? You, you want to explain that to us in the chat, Simon, Dan? Sci-fi scam. I, uh, sir. Simon, Dan, in the chat. That's a terrible sir. example. Sir, yeah, he's, a, he's, a, he's an idiot. He doesn't I, understand I what he's trying to prove. This... Sorry, John. Sorry. Go ahead, Q. Yeah. Sci-fi scam. I mean, do you actually believe that we don't know that you're a pretender clown <laughs> or or have you convinced yourself that you're not a dunning kruger pretender clown uh, this is a serious question sci-fi yeah, scam but, yeah but he doesn't do science he just gives opinions it's all he's ever done well maybe coach no. he does is, is quite easy actually because all he does is just sit in a chair and hit record <laughs> then read off of Wikipedia. Anybody can do that. You don't need half a brain to do that. I I challenge, oh, God. I challenged this sci-fi scam, you know, back when he first came out. I think he had like 120 subscribers. He put some nonsense. I can't even remember what it was. And I asked him, I said, sci-fi scam. Do you know what a hypothesis is? He didn't know. He didn't know what a hypothesis was. He couldn't post a hypothesis. I said, please post one regarding anything. Anything. He couldn't do it. And he blocked me. That was yeah, sci-fi scam. Yes, that seriously. You're not that only a... Dunning Kruger clinical level pretender clown, you're a liar, sir. That got me cracking up the other day. So someone asked you about who's the guy with the calculator? Globe Earth calculator? What's the guy's name? Nick West. No, the other one. Walter Bislin. Walter Bislin. So you said, Oh, is that the Walter Bislin that deletes comment threads? And um obviously got into the details of, of you leaving a comment on a particular video and that it was deleted he was the original comment lever um so i think it was 10th man said well what was the comment and you went sorry pardon come again he's like well, no what, what was the comments that you replied to him with what did you ask him there was a short pause and you said post a formal hypothesis about anything <laughs> yep that was it Go, Rumpus, Rumpus, Rumpus. Uh, uh, you're going to be the star on my show here in a couple weeks, brother. You remember that back in June 2016? It's coming again. 
Right, we've only got two housekeeping questions, thanks to Sam and Dan. Thank you for uh, giving me a good 20 minutes of material with that little bouncy trick. Wonderful, wonderful. Let us know how it proves Earth spinning. I'll look forward to it. Any evidence that you can have gas pressure without the necessary antecedent of a container for the gas to press upon? Necessary antecedent? No. Never seen such a thing in my life. Yeah, I am loading up a three-year-old video, cutting edge. Yeah, we're not on the cutting edge. It's the same argument over and over and over again. We're not trying to find the benefits of B12 and curing of cancer here. Nothing's changing. The earth is either flat or stationary, or it's a spinning turd going through the vacuum of space. Nothing's changing here, clowns. That's outrageous. The problem is their arguments haven't adapted from 2015. 2014, there's probably quite a few flat earthers that be caught out by logical fallacies, affirming the consequence, begging the questions that come from their side. Well, probably mid-2015, all of those arguments were taken away from them, and nothing has improved on their side since. They haven't addressed any questions. We're, we're going through them now. Let's see if you're an audience member or you're watching this on the re-upload. Let's see how many answers we actually get. We'll, we'll start a scratch. These are the housekeeping questions. They've been asked for a considerable period of time, none of which have got answers. So is there any evidence of Earth curvature? We'll rattle through these relatively quickly. Nope. Feel free to take part, Discord and chat. And if you're playing at home, leave a comment. The best ones, best answers, I'll put a little heart on. They'll go straight to the top of the list in the comment section. Any evidence that Earth actually curves? No. Nope. So a few fundies in the chat just say, yes. Now, what we require is a natural demonstration of an Earth that curves, that doesn't use a presuppositional calculator that uses perspective. And calls that Earth curve. That, that's not going to fly. So yes isn't really much cowbell fundies. Just telling yourself yes isn't answering the question. It's not demonstrating Earth curve. What about axial rotation as we've just discussed with the demonstration given us of a lack of proof Earth spins. A lack of deviation in the form of a no Coriolis effect example with a tractor and a trampoline. What about evidence that Earth actually does spin? Proof of axial rotation of the Earth-based variety. What about that, chat fundies? You're going to say yes? Got a Discord server got a full question of people. For, oh, sorry, go on. I got back. a question for John, if, if John is still there. We'll get, we're will get. we going to get through the housekeeping still questions. There, John. There's people, people in chat that are saying, oh, well, this is just a rehash of 2016... Uh, debate between rumpus and quantum eraser yeah your arguments haven't moved on you haven't addressed a single flat earth housekeeping question there is no evidence of earth curve the axial rotation comes with a begging the question as do all globe proof the earth spinning you assert that we need to argue about a coriolis effect that starts with the presupposition that earth spins so what about actual proof that earth is spinning fundies in chat yes Maybe is that your cowbell to prove Earth spins something that's fundamentally incorrect and just has logical fallacy attached to the proof? Poor show. What about proof that there's a vacuum of the sky? Yeah. What about outer space being proven when it violates several laws of nature? What about that fundies. Whole panel for the Discord server, people. Maybe they're on strike because it's not it's not productive to have this conversation in a in amongst the uh, in amongst the long protracted silences. While I say you don't have proof, Earth spins, fundies. Earth's not spinning. You claiming that you can justify why we don't see the deviation you need to prove Earth spins with a trampoline and a tractor like Simon Dan has done is shite. You need actual proof Earth spins fundies. You believe you live on a spinning rock flying through a violation of a second law of thermodynamics. 
So what what you got? Prove Earth spins. Prove there's a vacuum of the sky. So far, lots of silences. Oh, Simon then doesn't know apparently what's the second law of thermodynamics and Boyle's gas law. Because he's asking in chat when you said that it violates several natural laws. He's asking, violates laws of nature, question mark, and he laughs. Entropy. The gas would fill the space. Huge, enormous vacuum. The gas would want to fill that. Gas which expands in all directions. Entropy would increase. It would fill the available volume. No, no, not space. according to Rumpus. There is no entropy on the Earth. <laughs> yeah, that's idiotic. Nothing for the gas to press, press upon in your fundy rhetoric, globe heads. The gas would fill the available volume. And it's not. So therefore the sky is not a vacuum. Any claim from NASA or any space agency is automatically debunked by this claim. You'd think there'd be more than a protracted silence and a bit of ruckus in the chat. No, your fundy space beliefs washing its way down the toilet and we've got nothing but silence. Yeah, but that, that's when they try and push the ver reversal burden of proof. Prove Shall space I is fake. I don't need to. It violates several laws of nature. We have gas pressure, the necessary antecedent being a container. Their claim being the sky is a vast cavernous space for the gas to fill, but doesn't. No, you're not going to have violations of laws of nature as your belief in a heaven vacuum. No, thank you. That's just nonsense. The gas would fill the available volume. Entropy would increase. The gas would fill the space. Or Conspiracy Cats, quote, 2019. Without the container, there can be no pressure. End quote. What about molten iron cores, bloody fundy idiots? You were all taught in school that there's a molten iron core. So what gives? You got any proof beyond it, given that we've only dug 12 kilometers? Shout out to Awaken Narrative, he says. Pseudo Simon Dan. Hold on. Ranty's in the way. Terence Howard <laughs> is coming. Okie dokie. Thanks for the super chat. Awaken narrative. Also, big shout out to Dave Rakia Gifford for the hundred dollar super chat. Wow, Rakia life, truth and blessings. Shout out to trolls. Share your pain. Yeah, share your pain, <laughs> fundies. This is the point to share your pain. All of your concerns about why space is really, really real. They saw it on TV. Yeah, this is your point, man. Share your pain. Tell us why space is real. Tell us why your religion is true. Tell us why we are laughing at you. Molten Iron Core? Anybody? Still just yummy marshmallows over a fire for me. Shout out to Workhorse who says, get in the chat, Satan Dan. I don't know if you can, actually. There's 15 people. Uh, Righteous Force, any chance you can kick a couple of non-chatty people into the after show? So we've got a bit of space. So at the very least, he has the opportunity, or anybody for that matter who wants to, you know, actually provide some answers to the housekeeping questions that have been around for quite some time red pill philosophy another shout out says script man dan has a low iq <laughs> <laughs> script no that's sci-fi scam get it right uh nathan you missed one more super chat just before red pill did i really yeah no i don't think so workhorse red pill David Rakia Gifford and Awaken Narrative. They've all, they've all had a shout out. So we'll rattle our way through the last of these. Gravity. The non-force force that gives rise to a force that's not actually a force, but you can think of as a force. From the bending of a conceptual <laughs> medium known as space-time. Yeah? This horse crap is being laughed at by the actual, uh, what they call, scientific establishment currently. They all seem to know, all the people at high in your rhetoric world of fundy globe belief, they all know gravity's a farce. It's been known for about 100 years. 2010, Eric van der Linde. We've known for a long time gravity does not exist. <laughs> yeah. Gravity is not a force, end quote. George Musa, 2019. Conceptual medium. 
You can't bend a concept. You can't bend freedom. You can't bend space-time. And it's certainly not giving rise to any forces. Yeah, more protracted silences. What's wrong, Globies? Strike, maybe? Boycott, maybe? Maybe I'm just not a nice enough guest. Guest? Host. That's what I meant. Boycott. <laughs> Oh my word. I got something to say about you, one of the house. You laugh, questions. but they've tried that before. <laughs> they've yeah, done that before. <laughs> yeah, um, so um, there's a question of um, is there any distance to the sun? And that's sort of related to the moon as well. Like, is there any um, confirmed distance to the moon? And I remember asking john about the moon bounce and he referred me to uh free space path loss which is basically um an explanation for what happens to the attenuation of radio waves um as they travel through the medium of the atmosphere and how certain things like uh the size of the receiving antenna as well as the line of sight affect whether that that signal is going to actually be transmitted to the receiver or not. I just wanted to know how this is related to uh, to moon bounce in particular. You just answered your own question. I told you about that the other day. You also forgot the power that you yeah, have to transmit that signal. That's the most important part. The power. Listen, there's about twenty five the problems. Power is Say again? Go ahead. I didn't hear what you said. You didn't hear what I said. There's about 25 different problems. The main problem being you don't know what it's what the signal's going through. You said atmosphere, right? Is there atmosphere all the way to the moon? Really? That's interesting. Uh, yeah. You also, got the, you also, the you also got the problem. The extends all the way to the moon. I'll tell you what, go ahead and give me, I'll go ahead and track this down in my files. This is 2015 argument, folks. Go ahead and give me the signal strength. Um, I haven't looked into that. Yeah, you, you need to. You looked up free space path loss and you didn't come across signal strength and the transceiver gain. Uh, you haven't looked into free space um, path loss then. I, I, I did. I did come across antenna gains, um, basically referring to the power supplied to the antenna and how that affects um, the signal strength. But um, as far as with the moon bounce, they, they were shooting with a direct line of sight with no obstruction. Um, but you're saying that the atmosphere can obstruct the signal? Is, is that I'm what not, you're saying? I never said saying? that. I never said that. Oh, okay. What are you talking about? No, you didn't. So if we have a, if we have an antenna that's pointed at the moon with no um, with a direct line of sight and no obstruction, and uh, we aren't sure what the antenna gain is, so we're not sure how strong that signal is. What else would interfere with that signal? Is what I'm wondering. Well, you don't know what, it, like I said, I'm going to say this one more time. You don't know what's between you and the moon. You, you know a little bit about the atmosphere. What, what about the rest, number one? You don't, you need to know the power. I need to know the, the megahertz. Like I said, I have to go back into my files to check this out on what exactly I need. Um, give, me a, give me two minutes. I'll be right back. Well, go well, ahead. Well, you do. Smoke them if I'm you got sure them. you have. I'm sure you have covered this, but so have Globusters. They covered this two or three years ago in terms of the inverse square law versus the power needed. And it was just ludicrous ludicrous numbers. So uh, this has certainly been covered before. But uh, m my argument last time, I'll just parrot now, which was in terms of the timings they claim that they're seeing the return signal in. So when Anthony, obviously it's not the moon, it was the... Uh, I can't remember what it was in that regard. I think it might have even been Venus. I can't remember. But they're getting a signal return in a timing that they've calculated based on R, based on Venus being the same R, etc., etc., etc. So when they get the timings and say, yeah, this this bit of noise in this signal, that's definitely the return signal. You go, well, what, based on your calculations for Earth being a sphere, 
and the trajectories of all of these transits based on Venus being the same size as Earth, that's where you've got the return signal distance from. Right, okay. It's just a load of crap. It's one presupposition after the next. I need the, I need the frequency. The next time you come on, I need the frequency of this bounce. I need the transmitter gain in dB and the receiver gain in dB. Then we can talk. Thanks. Get all that. Okay. Repeat the list just in case anybody else comes along. If you want to search it out as a viewer and stick it in a comment, I'll stick a heart on it. Hey, Jose. Yes. Yes, I need the hey, frequency. Hey, Nathan. I just got two quick points. Just oh, okay. okay, stop okay. interrupting me. I will expose this. Hang on, Jose. Now hey, I'll be, be rumpus by QE. I will stop be rumpus by QE. Me. Disrespected also. I will be overturned by Nathan, probably. So this is what I want to expose. The treatment that you guys are going to get if you decide to join the show. You're just going to want to talk one minute out of 60 minutes. You're just going to want one minute. Yeah, that's right. Don't can have your one minute. And then I get rid Jose. Jose. Yes. You can have your minute, but they're nearly at the end of concluding the point they were just making. I wasn't listening in the show. I don't listen to your show, Nathan. Jose. QE and Jose, please, can you both listen? Fine, you weren't listening, but somebody was literally in the middle of something. Who, who was it? Kiwi? Kiwi and Babs, yes. Oh, he's a garbage human being. I got to get out of here. I cannot listen to this guy. Yeah, your sister doesn't think so. Now, what I need for your moon bounce is the frequency. I need the transmitter gain in dB and the receiver gain in dB, right? And then I'd like to know what is between you and the moon. Each inch, I need to know what's between you and the moon. Thanks. Paul, it's quite a long list of things to get. Sure. Perhaps. Yeah, I'll get I, I appreciate you bringing this up because, as I say, the last time I heard this discussed was was definitely in excess of two years ago on Globebusters. They did a very good job of it. Well, I can't remember the details. You know, It's not necessarily the angle I attack it on either, but it's nice to rehash them. How do you know it's hitting the moon anyway? Say again? That's right. That's another. That's another really good point. Who who said that? Flatoid. Yep. Yeah. How do you know it's hitting the moon? Validate that. You got so many. There's so many problems with this. It, I've heard. I've heard the Glover say that they know that it's hitting the moon because when they point that um, antenna in a different direction, it it doesn't bring back the same. Um, they really? don't get the same signal back. Really, we need to we need to have them show, not say, show, demonstrate. Okay, anyone can say anything. Uh, go ahead, Jose. Oh, he's already gone. <laughs> shout out to Leonardo Gonzalez who puts 20 pounds in the super chat and says it's easier for these ballers to lie to themselves and accept that they've been lied to oh my the day they find out or accepted it cry me a river <laughs> thanks for the super chat Leonardo so Jose comes on the show starts rumpusing and then says QE is rumpusing him yeah after that, I think I would take him out of the Master B to hang out and make him come through Discord. Jose yeah. is a fellow YouTuber, and his show benefits us greatly. He is an ally in one form. Sorry if you don't like it. I like Jose's show, but the problem is that he um, normalizes trolls and he makes trolls look like normal people, but they're really not. And honestly, Nathan, I'm not really saying banning from the show. Just take him out of the Master B and he's, he can still he, come in through Discord. You can control him. He's not getting through Master B. He's getting through uh, another Skype chat. No, oh, he came into the Hangouts. And yeah, way you I, get don't, the I don't just share the link in Master B. I share it in various different places. So, oh, yeah, okay. You oh, will occasionally yeah. get some random person in the G Plus hangout that's like, I say, unfortunately, most of them don't have the bottle, I'll be honest.
Well, wasn't that lovely? So, where were we? I believe we were at... Gravity. Gravity, yes, indeed. So, we've done, covered molten iron core, we've covered no earth curve, we've covered no axial rotation, we've covered no proof of the vacuum of the sky. What about the R value? The presupposition that literally every single globe claimed to be proof ever will start with a presupposition of that value. Without exception. Yeah, yeah. There are be none here. The rumpus value. I had a question that I posed. Uh, well, I, well, yeah, I had a question. I, I needed help with it. And, uh, Is that Elijah? I was instructed to come to the show, yeah. Yeah, cool, man. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Go ahead, man. Mike's all yours. Go ahead. Um... So let me go to my gallery so that I can get the screenshots. Okay, so I was talking to someone and they were basically saying that they had measurements for R or calculations for R because I said calculations aren't measurements, whatever. So it reads as follows. So they say, so a calculation and not a measurement, 7.2 degrees times 50 equals 360. I don't know what that means and then they say after that one degree is 111 kilometers approximately seven degrees would be 777 two degrees would be or point yeah two degrees would be 20 kilometers approximately and then they say 797 times 50 equals 39,850 kilometers divide that number by two and pi and you get approximately 6,345 kilometers for an approximate radius. And the actual radius is 6,371 kilometers. That's what they said. Sorry, radius. I wouldn't yeah. know what that means. Yeah, I, mean, just I, I, what I, I just got a good, hold on, just a quick question. Radius of what? <laughs> the Earth, I suppose. Hold on. <laughs> Let me just ask again. Radius of what? Hmm. I'm not well, I'm not sure because I was asking them exactly what they meant, but they just repeated these numbers and said that they answered me. So But just think about it for a second. What are they trying to prove? And my question to you is, radius of what? Radius of Earth, right? Yeah, but is it the, is it a radius of a circle? Hmm. Do they claim Earth's a circle? <laughs> radius of what now? It's a great question. Of a begging the question, spinning ball. Oh, a sphere. So we're yeah. going to automatically assume this radius value is a spherical radius value then, are we? Take your time, fundies. Not you, Elijah. I know you're just putting the question. Yeah, it's it's vacuous. There's yeah, I'm there. just trying to I'm just trying to figure out how to answer that back to them because I'm not exactly <laughs> sure. The so they're gonna they're gonna work because out because the subject was on. Okay, you're trying to prove a globe, and I was saying the presupposition is in the fact that you're assuming that it's a globe, right? And what's the radius exactly the what's and the so, radius of and a globe and that's the globe aka a sphere right. right so they're presupposing that it's a sphere and then they're telling you how they've worked out the maths of the radius of that sphere that they presupposed that's fascinating so they start with the presupposition of a sphere uh, and go from there okay. and then give you the mathematics based on their presupposition that earth is a sphere yeah they're just giving you uh, calculations. I guess I got, I guess I got uh, tripped though because I was trying to figure it. I was trying to figure out 
how they were measuring and they i they guess that's measure. why i was right in saying that measurements aren't calculations and that's that's correct you're correct you you have nothing they have just calculations that's they just gave you calculations of, of vapor nothing but tony well, before you close out uh the show nathan tony liar he said that we know why it's hitting the moon because of mirrors left on the moon. <laughs> so we fire a laser and we get a coded signal. Really, Tony? Did you did you know that in 1962, uh, folks at MIT shot a laser to the moon and got a bounce? Where were the reflectors then? Yeah, they were still being manufactured because the Apollo missions hadn't taken place yet. And with that, I'll say if you are watching on the Nathan Oakley premiering stream, then stay tuned as there will be an after show to follow. Unfortunately, if you're watching this live on Nathan Oakley 1980, then this is where we bid you farewell. A huge, massive, enormous thank you to all of you who smashed the super chat, liked, commented, shared, subscribed, and all that good stuff. Be sure to check out NathanOakley.com and the Flat Earth Debate Forum to keep up to date with the community debate. As I say, stay tuned if you're watching on Nathan Oakley premiering stream. I've been Nathan Oakley, and I'll see you all in the next video. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! No future for the globe. Yeah, they were claiming that crap long before they sent the Apollo missions through the claim to be violation of a second law of thermodynamics now known as outer space. You know, that journey did not take place, but they'll still claim that they dropped stomach on the rock that we blatantly debunk with the medium itself being fake. Yeah, yeah, they went through the fake medium and dropped some mirrors on there. What about them claiming to have done it in 62? Silence. <laughs> Yeah, they went there in the 20s uh, before NASA went there and they shot the Universal logo from their real space. There's a great interview behind the scenes with Brian Cox where he's going to that observatory that's, that fires off all the photons and gets the you know one or two back to claim they've got the distance when they're using those claim to be their reflectors. And on the journey to the observatory... The producers having to explain to Brian Cox why it's necessary to go and do the journey to prove that the moon landings took place. Because Brian Cox just wants to focus on the actual, let's say this loosely, science of what they're doing at the observatory. As opposed to focus on the fact that it proves men went to the moon because they couldn't do it without the reflectors. But this is all having to be laid out to Brian Cox by the producer of the show. You think, in this scenario... The producers, a guy making a television program, Brian Cox is supposed to be a professor. Yeah, he's having the producer explain to him why it needs to be phrased in such a way that it proves the moon landings took place. It's a really, really good interview. I've got a, I've got a, um, like a video log about it on my channel with the with the sections cut out and me laughing at Brian Cox. So that means that the producer is part of the Globe production crew that produced all the bullshit about yeah, the Globe. of course. And in this instance, they're pointing out to the professor, Professor Cox, that he needs to toe the line because the point of doing this is to prove we went to the moon, not to talk about the actual stuff going on at the observatory. We're proving the reflectors are there, Dumbo. Now that's part of the narrative. Have you read the script? And he's like, no, I didn't read the script. That's why we give you a script, Dr. Cox, so that you can tell them what we say not what you think is important. Go and learn your script so that you can tell them all about how we went to the moon and it's proven by these reflectors. Script man Cox. That uh, reminds me a lot of uh, Bill Hicks and his joke about the right, about the rich men have, that had a lot invested in the right. It's like, we invested a lot in this globe, so tell them about the globe. Oh, I did miss a super chat. Truth seeker, hashtag share your pain. Yeah. Sorry, I did miss one. 
I really I have a question love that for you. tractor video that you showed, Nathan. That was pretty cool. It was worth digging it out, wasn't it, and not ruining the surprise? Because when you all got it up, there was like a guffaw of laughter as you all saw it. And I didn't want that to, I didn't want to give the game away. So that obviously that was recorded, which I was quite pleased about. Uh, and, and your and your interpretation of them proving no deviation was excellent. <laughs> right. These people are morons. And I know, um, was it you, Ranty, that said I was just trolling? Oh, bloody yeah. hell. Whoop a ladder. Where's my mute button? Yeah, it, it was ranty, yeah. To the old man, Dan. Look, Ranty's sent his camera. It's uh, currently sat at the post office, unfortunately. I've got to go and get it this afternoon. Um, but I've got to give it to Arwin on Saturday. So hopefully it'll up Arwin's content level quite considerably. Thanks to the generosity of Ranty Flat Earth. Subscribe today. So yeah, I've got to give Arwin a P900. Hopefully I'll get a little video of that that um, exchange. Oh yeah, that would be nice. Show, show hey, this reaction. <laughs> Go on, Ranty. Yeah, I was in the hot tub, mate. <laughs> oh, okay. Hi. <laughs> oh, the phone was miles away as well, so I've had to get out and drive myself just to say, great, yeah, glad yeah. you've uh, it's arrived and uh, what are you picking up today? Yeah, it's, it's actually at the post office. It's because I wasn't here when I was on the phone to you. I was like, oh, I've got to go out. Sod's law, it came precisely when <sighs> I left. There we go. It's fine. My wife's going to get this afternoon. Oh, well. life. I've left him a surprise on the uh, on the, the, the memory card as well. You didn't take that picture of your penis, did you? No, not at all. No, no. No, two spheres. Oh, you didn't take a picture of your testicles, did you? He found the, he's found the ball. They're not spheres, they're slightly oblate spheroids. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm not turning that camera. I'm, I don't know if I'm going to touch it. <laughs> I'll put gloves on. I'm only joking. I'm only joking. I wouldn't do something like that. To be fair, that was my gag. I was like, he's, and Ranty's like, you can have a play with it. I was like, I'll take it out and take a picture of my cock for him. <laughs> Here you go, Ranty. Uh, Arwin, <laughs> here's, here's a picture of my genitals. <laughs> have fun. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, childish humour, eh? It is very childish. We're silly. Right. I'll listen to you guys carry on. I'm getting back in the hot tub. Fair enough. How do you, by the way, Sleeping Warrior? How do you? There will be a second show if you want to. The Globe Light Tour bus has almost arrived at Amsterdam. Wow, really? I believe so. Who's driving at the moment? I have no idea. Have you got a driving licence, are we? Arwen? That's a worrying silence. <laughs> Alan's here. Oh, I just disappeared. Hey, Alan. Hello. Hey, up. What's happening? Oh, look, we're trying <clears throat> to find out if Arwen's got a driving license or not because he's going on the Globe Light Tour. Starts tomorrow, Alan, did you know? Arwen oh, driving. You can barely get out of bed. <laughs> well, he's got to do several th thousand kilometres of driving, as I understand it. Let's hope he's got a driving licence. Thank God we've got him sorted on the gravity cut talk. I'd hate to see Arwen in the middle of Europe telling everybody that there's a downwards acceleration force that might be gravity that's not gravity. Christ, them days bring back memories. According to his show the... today, he was experiencing a downwards gravity force. That's just depression. <laughs> Relative density disequilibrium. Relative density disequilibrium. Is that in anywhere near the optical slant? No, no it's not totally, optical. Totally different. It's a subject. refinement. No different subject. It's That's purely curve. mass volume related. Let me just summarise the two subjects for no. Optical slant, that would be Earth curve and the hijacking of perspective. This would be gravity. I have a question for you. Go ahead. You regularly say the sky vacuum. Who in the history of mankind has ever said the sky is a vacuum? 
Well, you understand Sorry. that there's a differential, right? One's a vacuum, one's 14.7 PSI. If you've got a vacuum up there and you've got a pressure here, we must be looking into a vacuum. Yeah, but is the sky not between the land and outer space? So if outer space isn't real, well, then at night time, why are you going to claim the sky as a vacuum? At nighttime, we don't see any sky, do we? We only see the vacuum of space. No, there is no vacuum of space. That's a violation of several laws of nature. No, no, no. So no, you're saying we, we do don't see the, see the sky? Sorry. Outer space is claimed to be a vacuum. Correct? Yeah, we say the void of space is a vacuum, yes, but we right. don't say the sky is a vacuum. No, I say the sky vacuum in those particular words connected together. But what we are looking at when it's referred to as a vacuum is the sky, isn't it? No, because the void of space is beyond the sky. The okay. clouds are in the sky. No worries. What, 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 where is the sky? Maybe that was too difficult. You're really question. asking where is the sky? Yes. Where is the sky? You where you draw the, line. the sky is the Earth's atmosphere between the land and outer space. You say between. So where's the sky? It's just above us, right? Yes. Right. And, and space the would be area beyond. claimed, yeah. for the sake of argument, that Saturn resides in. That would be the vacuum of space, correct? Yes. And from where I stand, when I look at the sky, can I see Saturn? When you're looking through the sky, yes. So, looking through the sky? I'm you're looking, looking through at, the sky at into the, the sky. vacuum of space. I'm looking at the sky. I'm looking at the skies. The vacuum of space Sorry, I, I'm talking, but it seems that my demolition again is very troubling for you and you need to talk while I talk. So, I've laid it out very simplistically for you. We study the skies when we look at the various stars in the sky. Now, those stars in your fundy globe head, zealot, religious rhetoric of outer space, that area I look at, called the sky, is claimed to be a vacuum. Ergo, the terminology sky vacuum. I was only asking because I've never heard anybody else say the words sky vacuum. That's yeah, I say, just one I say it. I say it. Yeah, I know you say yeah. it. Yeah. You the, seem the, to be the, the only reason, one. The reason you don't hear it is because when you put those two words together, it sounds truly preposterous, doesn't it? Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in your religion, the sky is a vacuum, mate. No, the sky is not a vacuum. Let's do it again, because it seems that this is a very common issue we find with globetards. It's called cognitive dissonance. When I look up at Saturn, I am looking at the sky. Do you disagree? Wait, let's put it this way. Let's no, let's not put it any other way other than I'm putting it. When I look at the stars, cognitive dissonance infected retard, I am looking at the sky, aren't I? You're looking through the sky, Nathan. No, what do you mean through the sky? I'm looking at the sky, studying the sky. <laughs> I've never heard anybody describe it as looking through the sky. 
What kind of a word is through? Is it only you that says they're looking through the sky when everyone else says we're looking at the sky? What kind of a use of language is this, moron? I've never heard anybody say through the sky. Okay, you're on a spaceship and you look out the window. No, I'm never on a spaceship looking out the window, dick brain. When have you been on a spaceship looking out the window? I haven't, but astronauts... Oh, well then shut up about your spaceship example. Hands up on the panel, anybody here at all who's ever been on a spaceship in a second law of thermodynamics violation. Go. No, I haven't been on a spaceship. Your example's not going to work well, mate. Nobody else has got this example, not even you yourself. So do you want to start again? Uh, Nathan, is that right, okay. the hypothesis guy? The, the question guy? I don't know which guy this was. So I, I, I don't. They don't live rent free in my head. I don't remember delivering any troubling arguments. So yeah. I don't know who he is. <laughs> I don't so care either. But they, this is the the ask, ask a question. Oh, ask a question, guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Ask a question. Am I having you chicken say dinner? Space isn't real. Yeah. Am I correct? Any more on the sky vacuum? Your sky's a vacuum in your religion, mate. Is that ludicrous or what? You say space isn't real, am I correct? Yeah, the sky is not a vacuum, that's correct. The sky, which you claim is a vacuum, isn't, because it violates but several laws of nature. Before, you see, if the sky was a vacuum, the gas that we breathe would fill the available volume, and the vacuum of the sky, in your claim to be rhetoric of outer space, would be a volume that that gas could fill. But it doesn't, debunking the notion that the yep, sky yep. is a vacuum. So yes, outer space is definitely fake. Right. So if space isn't real, why would we need a container? Because that's the necessary antecedent to have gas pressure. So what's on the other side of your container? Sorry, what container? I didn't assert any container. I said to have gas pressure, you need a container. I didn't assert any specific yeah. container in regards to the sky now, though, did I? Try to listen but to the words you're saying that you can't have the Earth's atmosphere without a container. Is you saying there is a container? That's your deduction based on my reasoning. So you have deduced there's a container. Good for you. I intentionally do not make that conclusion. I leave it to you in the case of the fundies or you in the case of the great audience on Nathan Oakley channel to make the conclusion yourself. And you have come to the logical deduction, based on the necessary antecedent consequent relationship for gas pressure, that there must be a container. Right? Right, so now you're saying that there doesn't have to be a container. It is the necessary antecedent. Try to listen to the words I use. The necessary antecedent for gas pressure is a container. Right, so there is a container then. That's your conclusion. Well done. Welcome to the reality that is flat Earth. Right. So, is your container? Do you want to repeat your conclusion? your conclusion? Your conclusion. I'd like to hear it repeated. Highlander, look at the text chat. My conclusion is that you state that you can't have the Earth's atmosphere without a container. Therefore, there must be a container. That's an excellent conclusion. Well done, Fundy. That's why I position the way I do. Because you, the fundy, have just made it abundantly clear, based on your understanding, that there must be a container. That's your assertion. Like conspiracy cats. Without the container, there can be no pressure. End quote. Right, so the Earth can't have a pressure gradient going from what it is at the, the sea level all the way up to zero, matching outer space. That can't be possible. How does it have the gas pressure in the first place? That yeah, without the, the container, there can be no pressure, to quote conspiracy cats. So gas pressure gradient would be a delta of that which you need the necessary antecedent of a container in the first instance, i.e. gas pressure. Right, so when the gas pressure goes from 14 to, let's say, 10, right, What's the 14 
gas pressure pressing against them. Did you not hear? I mean, the is, there, time, is there several containers all the way up I'll containing again, these different layers of gas listening. pressure? You're not listening or acknowledging what we have said. There's a long pause, then you ask us the same question. In the defiance or the ignorance of what I've just said. To quote a teacher in this regards, Conspiracy Cats 2019, quote, Without the container, there can be no pressure, end quote. May I say something, Nathan? Go ahead, Paul. Um, what's his definition of a vacuum? Uh, according to gas law, you can still have a lot of stuff and very low pressure. Now, if you're saying there's no stuff up there, then what is it pressing against if there's no stuff up there? Yeah, but if the pressure gradient goes to zero, then and outer space is zero doesn't that match well you didn't hear what i said just, just formulated oh, a logical fallacy it. it's just affirmed the consequent yeah i mean because you can under according to gas law you can have a lot of stuff with very low pressure so there could be yeah. a pressure differential with a lot of stuff in it a vacuum means there's very little stuff so prove to us that there's no stuff up there. Gas law says you can have a lot of stuff with very low pressure. It's still got to be within a container, though. Right, yeah, I, mean, I was going to say it, but I wanted to leave the pause. Two more pages to do. Say again, so Alan? even if the pressure gradient goes to zero, you still need a container. No, it doesn't go to zero. <laughs> what? No. Entropy. Where did that happen? No, no, it doesn't go to zero. That's your presupposition of a sky vacuum getting the better of you again. And, and honestly, just, to, just so you know, just to be more clear, you can never reach absolute zero when it comes to temperature. It can never what? be reached. What? Or a vacuum. Yeah, yeah we're not talking about temperature. Can't reach the actual zero point in the physical reality. Zero, uh, it's, it's jumped the gun. We're not getting to an argument where particles of gas are stopping. You've jumped the gun there, Paul. I knew. I know what you're saying, it, but we're not there yet in the argument. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry, my bad. Jump the gun. It's all right. At least you're on the. You, you know, you, you, at least you know where this is going. It happens. Well, let, let me ask you this then. Uh, this might be a little bit easier for you, right? The, let's say, for talking sake, the pressure gradient at, the, at sea level is 14 psi, right? And at the next level, it's 10 psi. What's keeping the lower psi at that psi? No, it's constantly in Now, flux. we know the pressure. Oh, there's more. We know the pressure changes. Because the air gets thinner as you go up. You know this because you've flown in planes before. And you know that planes can only fly at a certain height because the air gets too thin and there's not enough oxygen for the fuel to burn. Right. Let me know when you're done. On you go. Thanks. Air doesn't separate into layers. That's not how gas works. It's in flux. It's dynamic. It's an inhomogeneous, anisotropic mixture of gases. Homogeneous being consistent, and it's inconsistent, as in a mixture. It's not layers like a bloody sandwich. It's gas move, moving freely Which and randomly. And all. That wasn't your cue to start talking. So when I asked you to let me know when you'd finished... Does that mean you get to talk through my rebuttal to your horse shit assertion that we have sandwich layers of gas? No, we don't. It's a mixture. Not only is it a mixture, it's a dynamic mixture. That'll be another one of those stone cold silences. Yeah? Notice you're not talking now. Right, so you're saying that there, there is no pressure gradient then? No. Try, I've said this about four times to you, specifically to you. 
Try to actually listen to the words that come out of my mouth. No, I am not saying there is not a gradient. I am saying it is dynamic by nature. Right, so my question was, what keeps the 14 PSI at sea level at that PSI? It doesn't work like that. that. Is it left. is not a bloody sandwich. You haven't got a layer of 14.7. That's nonsense and not what gas does. That's the third time I've said it. The fact that you can't comprehend what I'm saying doesn't mean you need to keep asking the same question. So you're saying that the pressure is the same all the way up then? No, I'm saying it's not layers. It's an anisotropic, inhomogeneous mixture of gases. It is also dynamic. That's the fourth time. Why am I wasting my time with this retard? What does inhomogeneous mean? Defeat. And the PSI is 7 PSI. Shit for brains. And at sea level, Don't 14 PSI. Don't leave a massive pause and then ignore my pertinent question. What Why does... Why do you say like that? Don't talk through me. I've asked a question, you've left a pause and then ignored it. What does inhomogeneous mean? Go! Question yeah, first. fuck why with. Do you... you don't understand the answers I'm giving. That's why you're repeating, at nausea, your question. Maybe look into the words I've used, try and comprehend them, or have a little tiny bit of humility and say... I haven't got the slightest clue what you're telling me. I don't understand the words you're using. I'm just going to continually ask why we don't have a layer of 14.7 and why it's not dissipating in various different gradiated layers like a bloody sandwich. I didn't say it looked like a sandwich. Oh, really? So what does inhomogeneous mean? And I do How are you going to start laughing or recognise your own ignorance? There is a pressure gradient. So he's back onto the same shit straw when he did last time. There was a long pause and he didn't answer this question that addresses his point. But he doesn't comprehend the word. So he's going to start asking me about pressure differentials rather than actually address his own ignorance in this regard. He's not capable of doing it. He's definitely not going to do it. He'll leave a long protracted silence, start asking me questions or giggle when I do this five more times as a little girly defense mechanism. Yeah, this guy's a retard. Why are you getting so angry? That, no, long I'm silence, just, then I'm a question to me. Question. A question to me. Not an answer. Not telling us what inhomogeneous means. A question for me after a long pause. How predictable. Right. That's precisely what I just predicted you would do. Right, let's just oh. say I don't know. There you go. Are you happy? Am I happy? No, especially given the fact that I actually explained what the word meant only three minutes ago but now that you've actually conceded i can round out this after show on time because you've conceded you don't listen to a word that's being said clearly because i explained what him in him <laughs> inhomogeneous if i could get my tongue around it with that i'll say a huge massive enormous thank you to all of you who did join on the nathan oakley promo stream for hopefully smashing the super chat, liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing, and all that good stuff. Of course, a massive thank you to all of today's debating panel for making this after show possible. I've been Nathan Oakley, and I'll see you all in the next video. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day!